so good afternoon everyone uh, welcome to the to the workshop today and today we are going to uh, can you guys hear me can somebody confirm if you can hear me yes okay thank you So, so we would keep this workshop interactive, all of those who are online. And uh, the best way to do it is like, instead of me just lecturing all of you or sharing one way or another, I would like to keep it interactive as you should participate in it, right? So as you do so, there would be more benefit. So today's topic is how to build a better relationship with technology. So as the topic suggests to build a better relationship with technology, uh, that means the current relationship is not optimum, right? It's not in the best way, best form. So all mm. of you who are here, uh, also online, how many of you think that your relationship is not at the best level with the technology? Yes, can be better. Can be better, yeah. Anyone else? So since we are on this topic, so, and to take best advantage of this topic, I would request you to uh, keep all your technology interventions aside, right? So turn off your mobile phone or put them on silent so that you can actually enjoy the class here. So before we even work on the, on the definition of uh, relationship with technology, let's, uh, Let's talk about uh, what are the signs of a healthy relationship in general, you know, not with technology, but in general, when you have a healthy relationship with someone, what are the signs of it? What do you, what do you look forward in a relationship that shows that hey, your relationship is really healthy, really enjoyable? Respect from each other. That's one thing, respect from each other. What else? It empowers you. It empowers you, that's one thing. Let's, uh, let's unpack respect from each other. What does it feel, what does it mean when we say respect with each other, you know, or respect from each other? What is really happening in that relationship that you really feel respected? or the other person feel respected. You don't take, uh, tend to take disadvantage of the other's, you know, presence or the feelings or, you know, consider him also as a human being or, you know. Okay. So you don't take disadvantage of them, which means you don't manipulate them, you don't, uh, cross their boundaries or they don't do the same to you because you both respect each other, right? Then, then in healthy relationship, you have trust there, right? That you can trust, yes. trust the other person, you can trust, and the person can trust you. And trust means you can trust the other person if you tell them, <laughs> they are not going to go and tell to the whole world, right? They are not going to go and post it, in the, post it on the Facebook. So there is a sense of trust that if I'm going to share something with this person that stays with them. Also, you trust them that like, hey, when I need them, they are going to be there for me, you know, or what they can do, what they cannot do. You actually know about them. Uh, you feel, another sign is you feel fulfilled. So when you are in that relationship, the time you spend with them, whether it's one hour, one day, you go out on vacation with them, that whole experience is overall fulfilling. You feel happy, you feel satisfied, you feel like, oh, this is worth spending the time, right? And uh, you also, in the healthy relationship, people give space to each other, which means, uh, hey, when you take, you want to have your own time, right? When you want to go and spend time with yourself, spend time with your own friends, you have that healthy distance there. So if we use, and there are several 
other uh, parameters for healthy relationship, but these are the key ones which everybody really uh, looks into that relationship. So if we use these as the benchmarks, right? Like, hey, it should be uh, respectful, there should be trust, there should be space, you feel connected, you feel uh, you feel fulfilled. If you use that those parameters, how do you see, based on these parameters, your relationship with technology? Do you see these parameters which we have defined are, are the same parameters which you can put with the technology and then it satisfied all those conditions in your relationship with technology? Like your, your technology respects you, which means uh, when you want to unplug, it, you can unplug, which means you can trust that whatever information you are sharing uh, with these uh, online entities like Facebook or whatever it is, they, it is with them, they are not sharing with other people. At the same time, you can have your own space, you can unplug and move to your own space. You feel really connected uh, with other people or all the other things that technology promises. Do you see that's happening in your relationship with technology? No. No? <laughs> Anyone else? Do you see those conditions are being fulfilled for the technology? Anybody Sometimes, else? but not always. Yeah. So, so what we are what we are trying to establish is that like hey some like our relationship with the technology is not optimum based on uh, all the parameters which we think is healthy right and this could be with human beings this could be with your pets this could be with nature whatever it is but in that sense technology is not really at the healthiest relationship and because of that we are actually suffering so any relationship which is not sufficing its purpose which is not really uh, doing what it should do then there is a sense of unfulfillment there is a sense of uh, that hey you're spend you're being in this relationship but it's not really serving its purpose so just like any resource with which you have relationship like whether it's money time technology whatever it is in that relationship it should actually make you move forward make you a better person help you grow all of those things should be actually there. So considering those, we have to revisit some of our uh, some of our tie-ups with the technology so that we can enhance it. So I was reading somewhere and there was this quote which says that uh, all you have to do is you have to actually find yourself. <laughs> but for everything else, there is Google. So if you want to find information about anything else, Google can provide you. But if you have to really find yourself, then you have to invest time in that relationship with yourself. And the reason I'm telling you this is because if you really see technology has overall, uh, technology has overall taken over our life. So you probably spend more time, and I'm not saying every single one, but most of the people spend more time with the phone, with your smartphone, than with anybody else in your life right now. So just, just go through all the relationship in your life with whom you spend the most time. When you go to the bathroom, your phone is there with you. Nobody else is there, but your phone is there with you. When you go out for a walk, whether somebody's walking with you or not, but your phone is there with you. And when you are driving in the car, there is nobody, but there is phone with you, right? And even when you are talking to somebody, when you are having that conversation with somebody, your phone is still there with you and sometimes it is uh, taking your attention away from that conversation or that connection with other person. So in some ways, uh, imagine that uh, you have this person with you who, who kind of hangs around with you all the time and you have to continuously pay attention to it. Whatever is the criteria like, hey, I need information, I need this. But that person or that pet keeps on hanging around you all the time, everywhere, and it constantly needs your attention. How would you feel? If that's happening all the time, you have that person, that particular thing is always all the time with you, always seeking your attention. What would be your experience in the end?
you get drained <laughs> yes you get drained and you get tired right do you feel the same way with technology also do you feel drained <laughs> at the end of the day when you are always constantly paying attention to that phone constantly paying attention all the notifications which it's throwing at you this is our experience that we feel at the end of the day we feel drained which means that that relationship has invaded my personal space that i don't have time for myself and all of us in some way or other know that hey i can restrain myself i can keep things aside uh, i can choose to disconnect my phone uh, i can choose to turn it off but i feel pulled all the time every few minutes to look at my phone connect or whether read whether it's required or it's not required so what we have to do is we have to actually find a balanced uh, parameter where i can interact when i can interact i can choose to turn it off choose to turn it off without feeling i'm missing something without feeling i am uh, really caught up into something that i really have to constantly pay attention otherwise something would happen right that anxiety is always running so if you if you really see if you're drain and drain is a big word but if you really break down your drain uh, that means that relationship is taking energy away from you rather than giving energy to you so if you are in a relationship with a person who is draining you would you like to be with that person no no but in this situation we we feel like we have no choice we have to be constantly with them so imagine if this person is somebody you have to live with all the time you are in a close relationship so you can't avoid them for example but you have to create a healthy boundary so you don't feel drained at the same time you use it this technology for whatever purpose whatever purpose and feel that it is fulfilling its purpose and uh, you can continue to grow by using it by being in a relationship with it rather than feeling drained at the end of every day so a lot of times there's a lot of research which has happened recently and most of the research points to one thing that our relationship with technology is not optimum so we all feel drained we all feel uh, the things which the technology has offered us to enhance our life is actually not enhancing it's actually degrading so for example all the social media which was, which is there it was supposed to do what what was the original purpose of social media if some of you are on social media what was the original purpose of it to connect us to connect us right what else i am there are other people also online who, what what is your response you know what do you think was the original purpose of social media so if the original purpose of social media was to connect and how many connections you have on the social media you might have 500 friends maybe 1000 friends how many of of those connections are true connections do you really feel connected to those people what is your experience do you really feel connected to those people or you can you can ask them for help and they would be there to help you so if you really see all of those things which are really happening social media instead of connecting has become a source of more of a disconnection more of uh, arguments more of different challenges you know in which now you don't have a connection you are actually more bitter there you are shouting at somebody somebody else is shouting at you and i'm not saying all of you are doing it some of you get involved in it and you get pulled into those kind of conversation where you don't have to be so instead of doing all of this where you would feel happy connected seeing what's happening in other people's life you are actually now being uh now being challenged every time you get on social media you feel more depressed you feel more disconnected you feel more upset you feel uh more of low self esteem especially there was a survey recently in which especially the young people these are the teenagers and early teenagers uh it has become a way in which people would compare each other oh how somebody else looks how do i look and it leads to a lot of low self esteem issues so in last 5 years the number of depression among the teenagers have increased Uh, like almost double you know and the amount of suicides in the teenagers uh, in that early teenage groups have increased by 50% and 
and a big part of this is associated with social media which kind of gives them the first sense of self esteem so who they are how many likes they get on their pictures who appreciates them who doesn't appreciates them and then a lot of stuff which is on the social media is like hey i'm going on this great trip i'm doing this i bought this so everything becomes in some way or other a a, a way to post uh, your life where everything is going great and when other people look at it and their life is not going great then they start feeling that something is wrong with them they feel more depressed they feel more upset and then they get into this this game of comparing putting things out there in their life which is not even true so there is a saying that like i always tell people like hey may your life be as happy as it appears on the facebook because everything you are really looking at social media is not really true so behind every uh, happy selfie there is a not so happy story so but you won't know it because people are only showing one part of it and if you buy into it then you are actually going to feel upset you're going to feel uh, low self esteem and and i'm not saying everybody goes through it but that's what the experience that happens and i was also reading a survey recently that a lot of people in some of the countries like india a lot of them actually travel to show it on social media rather than actually enjoying the whole idea of travel itself so if you really see we are more caught up into how we look and what we want to show to the world and that is what is done to our self esteem and then there are other things like there is a constant distraction which is happening in our life so when i say distraction means like there is always something or other which is trying to take attention so there are notifications there are uh, there are emails there are text messages and all of those and as per one of the recent surveys it says like every time you have a distraction you lose your focus for next 20 minutes or so so if there is you're working on something and a notification comes and you look at it or you get into a text or you start answering that email you get distracted from what you are actually doing so that's why people say hey turn off your notifications so that you don't get disturbed and if you really want to focus this thing you want a space especially people uh, who are writers people who are into creative business and in some way or other <laughs> we are all into some kind of creativity so we actually lose our focus and if we lose our focus then we don't we are not able to tap into our creativity which means if you get distracted we have less time we have less time we would be behind in our uh, in our tasks and then we would feel always one, what what is the one thing we all all of us complain that i have less time and in some ways this whole idea of i have less time i'm i always need to catch up on my list i'm always busy has become like a disease you know and now everybody is trying to fight with other to show how busy they are how much they are caught up how how much they have to do stuff to catch up so this whole thing of busyness has become more of a disease and more and more people are spending more times indoors than outdoors and even when they are indoors for example you are really trying to enjoy a movie or you are trying to enjoy a show if you are watching a nice show people are still distracted because they can't really figure out first of all which show to watch and a lot of people i have seen they spend half an hour trying to figure out what to watch and then when they are watching their phone is always on so they always like doing two things at the same time so whether they are with another human being their phone is distracting them even when they are watching movies or something then also their phone is distracting because then they would miss out what is there in front of them so what is really happening is we are constantly living in this culture of distraction all the time and distraction is like all of these different things which are there you know specifically our mobile phone it is there is they trying to pull our attention so somebody somewhere is trying to sell something to us they are trying to grab our attention and if you really see in some way or another people who are fulfilled in a relationship or in a work or a job one of the key qualities they show is they one they are highly productive and the reason they are highly productive is because they are very focused they have removed all the distractions that's why you see some of the writers they move away from all the hustle and bustle of life and then go to remote places where they can focus and write you know people who are into creativity they create separate windows so that they can do that but if you are always distracted then you cannot create something new you are always going back to your own old thought out ideas there is nothing new which is coming 
So in a recent survey, what people figured out was that people would spend either going online, reading something, watching something, uh, reading uh, like, like online, whether it's required or not. But ultimately, all of them, they are planning, they intend to do rather than spending time to think. And if you really see your life, if you have to find something, instead of spending some time to really think about it, what we really do, we get on our phone or get online and start trying to search for those things online, which means we are not going to tap into our own internal creativity. And that is one of the reasons why we also feel less fulfilled because if you are not using your creativity, if you are not putting it out there, then you would not feel fulfilled because it's not coming from your own inside. A big part of your fulfillment is something which you create by yourself, your own idea, uh, your own project, which is unique and bring it to life, you know. But if it's somebody else's idea and you're copy pasting all the time, then actually it is not going to fulfill you. So that's why a lot of us, even if we do a lot more things than what we were doing 10 years back, 15 years back, we still do not feel fulfilled. So the question comes if the relationship is not in the best way or best form, how do we bring it back into a place where we have a balanced relationship with it? So, <clears throat> so one thing is like why, why we feel so much pulled into technology is there are several factors which because of which we feel pulled into it. Anybody can, anybody can share why do you feel pulled into using the technology even when you know you don't have to use it or you shouldn't be using it. For example, if you have to go to bed at 10 o'clock, you are still finding yourself browsing, surfing at 11 o'clock in the night, even though you know you have to go back at 10 o'clock to bed so that you can get up in the morning and start fresh. So what is it that's pulling us into this, uh, into this, uh, what you call it, the whole whirlpool <laughs> of always being connected? Anybody would like to share? What is keeping you always hooked on to this? Boredom. Okay, boredom is one thing. What is another thing? There has to be discipline. I mean, one has to draw lines. Yeah, that's that's true. What you're saying. You have to be... the... So the question is, what is not allowing you to draw a line or to be disciplined? Why do we get pulled into it? That means you don't know what you want in life. That is definitely one thing. You don't know what you want in your life. You're just being like pulled from one side to another side, right? That's true. So there are different things. And as for research, what people figure out is that uh, one is you do not have the clarity where you want to go. So it's like, for example, just using this example, hey, what should I do with my life? Instead of sitting and thinking through it, what you are going to do? You go online and put this question out there, what should I do with my life, right? And then now you have 10 websites open and trying to figure out all the suggestions which are there, what should I do with my life or what should be my purpose in life? Is it true or not? Like people who have writer's block, instead of when they feel the writer's block, and instead of giving themselves time, they get online and how to remove the writer's block. So for every single thing, we are going and getting online to find a solution to it rather than spending some time and trying to find an answer inside. And in all the spiritual texts, if you have read, all of them have said, all the answers which you are seeking is, are, are already inside. But we do not feel we have time. We do not have enough patience to go inside and look at it. The another thing is, that there is definitely boredom so people do not know how to deal with boredom so a lot of us who are here we have lived in the world where we were pre-technology right like technology came like late 90s 1990s and now it's here but before 1990s and all that what would people do if they were bored what were the things they would do if they were bored Going to the nature walk. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the nature walk. What else? <laughs> Become more creative. 
in the, at home i mean uh, trying different things which keep you uh, which give you happiness in reality yes you have real conversation with people right <laughs> you would go and talk to somebody <laughs> even if it's a stranger in the park you would actually talk to them trying to have that conversation trying to understand from them trying to learn about them trying to tell about yourself so those conversations are missing and all the other things which you're men- mentioning trying to be curious trying to figure out something or trying a new uh, kind of a idea or a new project all of those are missing so one thing is boredom has its own positivity which means first of all if you are bored you have to sit with yourself and realize hey i am bored and then you have to find a solution what should i do with this boredom now there is no time for boredom also so there are so many things packed back to back that you do not have time to really deal with your boredom and boredom is actually coming to tell just one of you like you were saying that like hey what should i really do with my life what should the next step you don't even have time to actually ponder on that so as that is happening uh you feel bored you don't have clarity then other thing is lot of people and this is one of the big things is we call it fomo you know fear of missing out everybody is trying to consume as much information as it can so that they know everything about everything <laughs> so so that when they are in a conversation they don't look stupid you know and they don't feel disappointed or whatever it is so they want to consume as much information as possible and all of this is actually great for all the media and technology companies because they are trying to grab your attention the more they can grab your attention the more they can get your data because you are going to go click something they would know hey what you like what you don't like so that they can feed you with more advertisements so i'm i'm actually working in a technology company myself so i know how the things works in the background so everything you know is being tracked and everything is being tracked and your data is actually sold somewhere so there are more people now grabbing for your attention so this form of fear of missing out is very very much there which create a lot of anxiety what if i don't know about this what if i don't know about that and imagine when we were pre technology era we were okay with this like hey there are certain things i won't i won't know all the details and also having all this information is great but at the same time it's also a conversation and a connection killer and what i mean by that is like when you're having a conversation with somebody and somebody brings up something and you don't know about it what is the first thing you do you take out your you take out your smartphone search on the google and then say hey this is what it is and that's the end of the conversation so there is no so sometimes it's great but at the same time there is no further way to connect with that other person there is no further way to find a solution so what happened was i was reading about this research there was this lady who started this company on how to enhance your relationship with the technology and what she did was she hired a lot of neuroscientists a lot of uh, uh, like a lot of psychologists and all of that and what she does is she collects different patterns different data points on how these people use technology what is their relationship with technology and how based on the data how we can provide better solutions so that people get unhooked from technology so what she did was in one of those uh, projects she she invited ceos around 40 ceos from different companies and the goal was simple so so bring them in an environment where they can notice how these people behave react connect with other people when they are around technology and then the second phase of that was to actually uh, see them when there is no technology around so she invited them to a resort where it was a five day retreat so first first day all of these ceos actually came and they were interacting with each other and within this group of people she has also put four five uh, uh, psychologists four five researchers who were whose job was to actually uh, observe all of these people without revealing that they are the observers so what she what these people observed was the first day when all of these people came to the resort they were always like talking to other people but they are also kind of bringing up their phones checking things on that so all of these people were like not so focused not so much connected even though they seemed to have a great time so the so they they noticed all of this behavior the next part of the retreat which was next four days they were supposed to be taken into a remote location like it was like a desert and in that remote location 
there was no connection. There was no no connectivity. So even though they have their devices, they have no way to connect and figure out new new information. So what they noticed was the very first day, people felt actually little challenge and like because they would try to find more information on their phones or whatever it is, but since they were not connected, they would feel a little disappointed, you know. But from the third day onwards, they realized since it's not there, why don't I enjoy where I am, you know? So they started connecting better, you know? So they would, uh, so they would in the conversation when something would come up for which they don't know the answer, they would try to make up the answer, you know? But they would try to say, oh, if this happened, then this would have happened. So they would try to uh, understand other person's point of view rather than cutting them down by looking at an answer on the phone and say, no, you're wrong and I'm right kind of thing. Instead of doing that, they start building on each other's ideas. They start connecting better. They start going out for the walks uh, by themselves to so enjoy more time in the nature. So as they do that, they realized after the retreat got over that their focus has become better. Their connection with other person has become better because now they have more focus when they're having conversation with other people. They feel less anxious, you know, as if they are not missing out on something, they could relax and enjoy that moment. And then at the same time, their respect for other people grew, like they can share, other people can share their viewpoint and they can respect their viewpoint. So if they realize all of these things happened because they created a space where they could be themselves without technology. So if you really see from that perspective, really need to see where is it that I'm so pulled into it that I can, I'm losing out on my focus, I'm losing out on my creativity, I'm losing out on my passion, I also I'm losing out on the true connection, which was the original promise of technology. And, uh, and so for all of you... Uh, the internet keeps dropping. <laughs> The, the relationship is not very reliable here today. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so anybody wants to share anything? Any of your personal experiences like this? Do you have people in your life who are not like who are very technology obsessed, who are not present with you? Uh, anything where you feel you are like that, you should have been more present with other people. What do you think? I think sometimes um, it's so stimulating and there's so much you can learn that if you have a curious mind, it becomes a place where you can, you feel like you can learn unlimited things. But sometimes that takes away from being present with the people in front of you, which is more important. Yes. yes. That's one thing. Also, what do you think about? problem solving skills like to stay with a problem trying to resolve it and what i mean what do you that, mean yeah go ahead i said what do you mean so what i mean is that like if you're solving a problem to stay with the problem and try to figure out the answer rather than just jumping online and trying to figure out a solution there uh, it takes away your patience to stay with the problem because what you really need is you want the answer now and in this moment, right? So there is a sense of patience which comes with problem solving that's gone. So one one research which showed was that like, like I am born in an era where I was pre-technology, so I wasn't always connected. And now I can see both sides of it. But imagine if somebody was just entering into their early teens. So people who were born in 2007, they were born in an era when iPhone was launched, right? <laughs> so they are, they have, all they have seen is technology, always connected, always there. So everything which they wanted is always at the fingertip. So in that sense, they haven't developed the, to the same extent, the patience, the perseverance to really sit with the problem and try to solve it you know also they are not equipped to handle disappointment in the same way as the other people were in the pre-technology era because when you didn't get what you really wanted in that same moment then you have to deal with that that hey i have to wait for it so if you have a question you are curious they either you would go and talk to somebody who has an answer and if you don't have somebody you would look for 
the answer in the books around you. And if you don't have those specific books, then what was your option? You would actually have to wait to go to the library and find the right book or talk to the right person to get those answers. So there was a period where you have to be okay with not having some, something in this very moment. So you have to develop your patience to deal with not having the things in that same very moment. So the current crop of youngsters who are coming up, who have developed, who, have, who are brought up into the technology era, they don't have that level of patience. So which is really a key skill in life to really have patience and see things as they don't work out and have patience that see over a period of time it would work out. So that thing is not there. And if that happens, what's the result? If they don't get the things in the, in the expectation they wanted right here, right now, they're going to develop a lot of anxiety. So a big part of anxiety in our world is uh, that they do not know how to deal with disappointments or deal with things which are not available in this very moment. And the older people who didn't grow up with technology, they feel anxiety when the technology doesn't work. Yes. So yeah, they feel anxiety when technology doesn't work or they don't know how to use the technology, both the pieces, right? Because it's too much for them. For mm. young people, it's like, oh, it's their second nature. Like probably I have a lot of my friends who have devices. They don't know how well that device works. Their kids would exactly figure it out how it works. They have, you know, more features than, than their, their parents because they have brought up in that era. And there, whereas if you see the people who are like baby boomers and all of those, for them, it's very hard to really uh, deal with it because everything has become much more technical and they are used to doing things in a little bit of an old fashioned way. So we were, when we were in school, we were taught to improve our handwriting, right? I remember spending a lot of time using my pen and paper and kind of working on my handwriting skills. And I really had great handwriting. But these days, I hardly use <laughs> my pen to write anything. So in that sense, everything is more about typing than actually writing. So that is one skill which, which is getting lost. So I want to give you one exercise to really see which area in your life you have to improve in relationship with technology. So I want, so wherever you are, I want you to make a table, okay? So one of the columns is, one of the columns is why do you use tech technology other than work? So whatever is your work related stuff, that's fine. But other than work, what are the ways in which you use the technology? Maybe you spend a lot of time in social media, you consume a lot of time watching a lot of shows or movies on, on your phones or on your devices. That is one thing. The second question is in the second column is, what do you feel? What do you feel as you use that technology outside your work? You know, maybe some of you feel, oh, I'm always connected. You feel more powerful, more in control. You feel more busy. You feel you don't have to deal with the issues which are already coming from inside. Like it's a good way out. You can escape. It's a good escape. Maybe it's a great way to procrastinate the things which you really need to focus on. So that is second, which is what do you feel when you use it? Third question is what is the cost you are paying in terms of like when you're doing things which are not work related and you're spending or wasting your time on that, what is it amounting to, you know? So you have, which means you have less time for yourself. You have less time to sleep. You have less time to connect with real people or real friends rather than Facebook friends. So what is the cost you're paying, you know, as you're spending more time on, on this non-work related stuff? The next question is, how many hours you are using it outside the work? And I want you to be clear, what is your work and what is not your work? So you can't really say, oh, I work eight hours at work on computers and then I come back and I have to spend more time like doing my work. And you, you know exactly how much you should do, how much you should not do. And then the final question is, if you have to replace that extra time which you are spending on technology, whatever it is, so what is it that you will replace it with? So if you have to replace all the extra time which you are using to doing stuff outside work on technology, what would be the replacement? So if you have, if you're spending three extra hours 
texting, social media, doing all that stuff, if you can save those three hours, what would these three hours would be replaced with? Maybe you can work on those three projects which you really wanted to do. Maybe you would spend time figuring out what you really want to do in your life. Maybe you would go and meet those people you haven't built connection with. Uh, maybe you would get more time to work out. So what is it that it would be replaced with that time? So I would give you five to 10 minutes to do your exercise. And then don't judge yourself as you're doing this exercise. Just put your pen or put your keyboard and start typing, start writing the answers to these questions. Because you're the best judge of, uh, of what is going on in relationship with technology in your life. And everybody has a slightly different uh, connection. And then once we come back, I would like some of you to share. And then what we are going to do is we are going to do, uh, I'm going to share some solutions with you on how to go about building better connection, uh, better relationship with technology. Okay, so I'll put the timer, I would come back in five to 10 minutes, and then we would discuss and then go from there.
Okay, so I'm back. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to bring that question back, which I shared with all of you. Uh, anybody would like to share any of your responses if there was something which you realized after the exercise which you didn't realize before? Anything you want to share from your exercise? Yes, that um, there are places I can invest my time where I really want to put it more okay. to be more determined for that. Yeah. Okay, great. Anyone else? I, I think it all depends on um, what stage you are in life. If you are working or you are retired or, you know, mm -hmm. and that uh, how you are using that technology for me that te this technology has helped yes. in many ways mm -hmm. that i have become more uh, self sufficient mm -hmm. i mean if i have to change the cartridge of my printer i google it and you know things like that and otherwise you know if i wanted initially to know anything and i would ask my daughter to help me out she would say go and take the classes go and take the courses you know like that yeah but then i learned how to handle things mm -hmm. but i don't but i find that you know i mean it depends upon what you are looking for the things in from the technology and how it's going to benefit me that's how i use it but it is helpful mm -hmm. in many aspects provided you know what uh, you want and it has helped me tremendously that's what i feel yeah actually what you said initially that depending on what stage you are in like yes you are like a teenager who is hooked to it versus people who are genuinely working then there are people who are retired and in a different it, it all depends how they are using it you know and these the uses actually changes as we go along like uh, like I work with technology and this part of my work, I have to be on the computer, I have to get involved into a lot of different things. So in some ways, it's part of my work, but I can also use it as an excuse to always be on in it, you know. But as, as a teenager, they are not like working 100%, even though now their education and all of that is also getting very much online. But considering how much they work versus how much they are wasting the time uh, on all of these extra stuff. It is taking their time away from what they can actually do. And it's in technology world, distraction is one click away. You click one wrong link and you are into a different wormhole, you know, trying to figure out different information. And after half an hour, you realize, oh, you didn't even intend to use it. Just like you were saying, how you, you, have, you should have the clarity what you're really using it for, but also, to have that discipline and not everybody has that discipline. So, so now we have reached a point where relationship is out of balance in the sense that uh, now people who are like so obsessed, especially youngsters who are in the gaming world, uh, it's actually considered a disorder now medically that like, hey, they're hooked to the technology and this gamification disorder where they spend so much of time uh, playing games, being on the technology that they don't spend time on what they should be spending time on. And part of the thing is, uh, it's hard because for parents uh, that the kids go to school, they are in that environment where they get easily influenced with which is the new game coming, which is the new app coming and doing the stuff. And also uh, the other part is that something has changed in the way parents parent their kids. Uh, in this age versus the previous age. So for example, when in my age, if I ask something and my and my parents didn't want to give me or say this is not the right time, they would tell me upfront and I would have to accept their request and go with it. But nowadays, uh, pa parents do not feel that kind of a right or the way they can say no and their kids would accept that. Their kids want it and they have to do it this way, you know. And that's why a lot of advertisers now are focusing their advertisements towards the kids, you know, because they know the kids are the ones who are actually 
making the demands they are calling the shots at the home you know so their mother father their caretakers actually have to give them so the more they are able to influence children uh, or the young generation the more they are able to sell their products and imagine the new mind is still developing right they don't know what is right what is wrong in the exact same sense they're still building their critical thinking faculties and all of that and if they at that point of time get pulled into all of this then it's very hard for them to really figure out what the discipline is what is that line is and they just want to have uh, i need this today i need that tomorrow or get get on that technology hook so they can't escape like in china and korea now there are specialized camps which are called technology rehab camps you can even google that where parents have to leave their children in the rehab camps because they are so hooked on the technology that they cannot get off of it so these are extreme cases just like you have substance abuse uh, rehab and all of those kind of stuff now you have this technology rehab camps where there there are two months program three months program where they train retrain the kids how to live life without technology and slowly build a more healthier relationship so what are some of the things so some of the things you already know hey if i have this extra time what should i be doing with that extra time how it would help me but the number one thing is if you really feel that i really need to experience what it would be in my relationship without technology because some people just by thinking not having my phone walking out of the house gives them anxiety <laughs> so uh so in that sense one of the things what people subscribe to it is that go and take a technology detox retreat so if you really type technology detox retreat to google uh you would find a lot of these retreats happening which is not that you are kind of uh, you need help in the sense but it would give you a good idea what it feels like not to have that much of technology intervention in my, in my life but if you don't want to go that then the easy way to start is to create a list of all the gadgets in your house you know how many gadgets are there how many screens are there how much time you spend on each one of them and then plan what would you do to reduce them and just don't make a plan to reduce them in the sense oh from tomorrow onwards i'm going to completely spend these 2 hours technology free trust me it's not going to work because we are not so used to it to be so disciplined so create smaller chunks of plan where you say like hey i'm going to use this time for this purpose so instead of reducing reduce plus replace what are you going to do with that time so some of you shared that you are going to spend time in some other things which were which were missing out because of the technology intervention and don't send don't set unachievable targets so for example if i don't use this technology for 3 hours i'm going to meditate for 3 hours it's not going to work or i'm going to go and start writing for 3 hours start building it up start with half an hour start with 1 hour and then start building it up you know also make it very clear before you start like when you, before you sit on the computer before you pick up your phone just like some of you are saying to have that clarity what is it i'm going to use this like as i'm logging into the computer as i'm picking my phone what is the purpose am i going to message somebody am i going to check something and get off or uh, if you don't have that clarity then it's very easy for you to pull get pulled into one thing versus another thing uh the other thing is and this is the reverse way to do it is you set up a clear guideline on how many hours of sleep you have to sleep so that you feel refreshed and put that into practice because if you put that time that you have to sleep at this much time then automatically your technology use would get reduced then i also find uh, a detox buddy which means like if you are going through this same plan find somebody with whom you can actually do it together that way you can keep each other accountable then you create some tech free zones in your house or in your life for example dining room no technology so if all of you are having dinner nobody is going to bring their phones next to that similarly you can have a tech free zone into your bedroom for example i do not want to bring phones into my bedroom or if you are bringing your phones then you turn off all the internet all the data let it be just only on the phone if somebody has to call in emergency they can call you in emergency and uh, and then once in a while experiment hey i am going out and how about i leave my phone at home and see how it feels to go without having the phone so you might probably 
have to if you're going to a new place you have to probably have conversation conversation with the strangers which might be a little awkward because we are not used to it so much because we just pull out our phone to find the information so you can have that random chat or you are in a coffee shop you can talk to the person next to you so you can see what happens when you leave this technology stuff behind and then finally make a effort to spend time with yourself and what i mean by that is create those windows where you can actually spend time with yourself this is like just like in relationship you have your own space you have your own space free from all the technology because these days people don't have their own space people are just if they are by themselves they do not have tendency to spend time with them they would pick out their phone and then spend time on that rather than spending that time with them and what is happening is in that moment your awareness is now completely on the screen in which you are hooked to so your awareness is getting trained to be always on a lookout for something outside and that is one thing which we are losing in the world right now because despite all the things which we try to control through finances through uh, through building our own power physical power whatever it is one thing which is going to be in our control is only one thing everything else is like hey your body can fall sick uh, your financials can go off but one thing which is in your control is your attention and your awareness so what you are paying attention to is fundamentally your biggest property and what i mean by that is you have to actually train your attention because everybody is trying to get your attention so trying to pull your attention into things which they try to make it urgent which they try to sell to you which they try to uh, make you addicted to but if you do not know how to take care of your attention where to focus how much to focus then you would not have the control on your life which would mean you would not have the results which you desire in your life which would lead to lack of fulfillment in your life so one thing which is our property which we absolutely need to train is is our focus our attention you know as you pay more attention training your attention training your awareness you would have better fulfilled experience of life because then you would become naturally disciplined then you would naturally have clarity where to focus how much to focus what would bring benefit to you and then you can actually build more meaningful relationship more meaningful connection so one of the easy ways to build that uh, muscle of attention that muscle of awareness is meditation so when we are meditating we are actually completely focused on bringing our attention inside so you can start meditation with different things some people start training their awareness by focusing on a mantra like they would focus on a mantra they would chant it inside some people chant it outside some people bring awareness or that strength they would build by focusing on uh, their breath and all of them are great ways somebody can use a guided meditation somebody can use uh, meditation music there are a lot more options available now including on your phone you can download so many apps to actually uh, meditate so the goal is finally that you are training your attention so that you can focus where you want to focus how long you want to focus and at the end you can actually because you can do that you can actually create the experience you want wherever you are irrespective of what's happening around you so if you go into a place where a lot of people are anxious instead of getting pulled into their anxiety you can actually maintain your own calm and as your strength as your muscle grows with your focus you can not just get uh, pulled into the other people's drama other people's anxiety you can actually uh help other people to calm down to bring themselves into attention so that's why sometimes when we go into company of people who have been meditating for a long time who have very good uh who have very good connection with their own self who have a very good muscle of attention building you would naturally feel more present so present is like their attention their awareness is very much discipline very much aligned with where they want to focus so if they look at you like some people you connect with they look at you you feel that you get pulled into their energy in the sense in a healthy manner like you get more attention 
more clear, more positive, more calmer. So it is because those people have actually trained to focus where they want to focus. So their, their muscle of attention and awareness is very strong. And all of us has that, uh, all of us has that faculty which, is, which we can train. Because what has happened is in last few years, like technology was not there. Uh, like in last 20, 25 years, it wasn't so invasive in our life. But in last 10, 15, 20 years, it has become much more invasive. And technology grows exponentially. So if you really see how much faster the communication has happened, right? Previously, we would write a letter to somebody and then we would send the letter to somebody and then we would hope they would receive it in one week, two week, and then they would have read it and then they would respond to us and they would take us another week, two weeks, depending on the distance for us to receive. And when we receive the letter, we would read it a few times, right? We would enjoy, oh, I received this letter. The mail, when the mailman would come, you would feel different excitement. But now all of that has been cut short. Now you can talk to a person like several times, you can share text with each other. You can talk to them on the video, but in some way or other, that sense of fulfillment, that excitement, has gone missing, you know, because technology has helped us do that, but at the same time, it hasn't created that environment where we can focus better, where we can pay attention better, where we can enjoy what we have much more better. So all of this could help the technology, just like some of you are saying, you have it has helped you enjoy it, your life better, enabled you, empowered you. It can do you do even better for you if some of you can bring some of this awareness better. So if you can meditate every day, you can train your faculty of attention, your focus, how much to focus, how long to focus, you can actually become more fulfilled in your relationship with technology and technology will become an enabler and empower you rather than make you drain, make you tired, make you more feeling unfulfilled. So all of these great things await you, provided you know how to use it by bringing in best of your energy. And in general, there is a saying that wherever you, uh, wherever your attention goes, energy flows, energy flows, life grows. So right now, if your focus is on your, on your screen of your phone, then it's, it's basically pulling your attention there, right? It's not helping you if you are not doing it in a positive manner. Uh, if you're not engaging in a, in a more loving manner, you know, so in the sense that it is giving you more fulfilled experience. So our goal is to first train our focus and then we can use it. And all of us in some way or other knows how to focus our awareness. And what I mean by that is like when you are, when you're using your phone and even though you're in the middle of a mall, like there's so many things happening, so many sounds, so many people going around, but you're so focused on it that everything else disappears. So using the same analogy, if I'm sitting and turning my attention inwards on what's going on with me right now, you're training how to focus, then everything else disappears. And as you build this muscle more and more, you would know naturally that clarity would be there, how much time I have to spend on this one relationship versus another. And the good thing is it's not just about technology. As you train your awareness, you would really know how much to focus and pay attention to every single relationship in your life. So that's all I really wanted to share with you some of these ideas. And I would like to close with a little bit of a meditation. Uh, but before I close, I would like to hear anybody has any thoughts, any comments, any feedback uh, on this, uh, whatever I have shared today. Yes. Uh, recently, I didn't have electricity for half a day, and uh, I, then I realized, you know, I mean, how much these things have also be, can be become a, like a crutch for us, you know. And then I said, before the phones, I used to read a lot, and you know, I mean, now we have to undo ourselves and go to the stage i feel uh, become more independent we are becoming quite dependent on them and if we have no electricity and everything you know how to move ahead you know 
that that was the experience i it was like a detoxification as you said i'm in a forced uh, way of looking at things mm -hmm. and but it has helped in many ways yes but we should not use it uh, you know i mean dependency on this should not be to the extreme but when you go outside the world also i mean go outside it's a kali yugi world and everywhere you are hammered you know and we are not yet strong enough to weather the storms in the you know outside world that's how i feel yeah that's true and, and definitely it has a lot of positivity but right now the reason why we are here is to really see how we can make this relationship more positive more fulfilling rather than being overtaken by it so thank you for sharing anybody else want to share anything okay so what we are going to do is we are going to do a short meditation and then we would close with it so sit relaxed wherever you are and uh, some of you already know how to meditate so <clears throat> the idea is we have to just check how we are training our awareness and what i'm going to do is a simple exercise to really check where our attention is and how we focus our attention on different parts of us and what is the experience as part of it as a result of it so sit relaxed wherever you are sitting feel your feet on the ground feel your back supported by the chair or the couch wherever you are sitting and it's ironically ironic that like in some ways some of you are on internet some of you are on technology to be part of this session so see the benefit is like you could be anywhere and you can enjoy this session so sit relax and take a deep breath in and let it out take another deep breath in and let it out and then just bring your attention on your physical body right now so scan your physical body all the way from the top of your head to your feet and see what's going on physically for you so when i say what's going on physically for you i want you to feel into your physical body how does your body feel right now do you feel connected to your physical body do you feel disconnected to it either way it is right so do not judge do not criticize but observe just feel and see how you what's going on or part of you feel connected part of you feel disconnected and that is okay too and also check if there is some thoughts some stories around how you're feeling physically your mind is telling some stories some thoughts and if it is acknowledge it and keep it aside and bring your attention back to your physical body so as you bring your attention back to your physical body as you feel into it given where you are physically what is it that you really want more of which means what would make it even better in this moment physically the key word is this moment so what would make it better in this moment so should you breathe a little more should you relax in should you sit just in certain way you feel more relaxed should you acknowledge your physical body or have gratitude towards it what would make it better in this moment and whatever comes up just acknowledge it and see as you express that i need this in this moment there's something changes as you express this internally i need this so let's move to the next step and let's check energetically what's going on for us do i feel energized in this moment do, like do i feel alive do i feel flow of energy inside me or part of me feel alive part of it doesn't or maybe i do not feel any energy at all i feel completely flat and that's okay too so listen how it is as you feel into your energetic self and if your mind comes up with a story thoughts acknowledge it but bring your attention back to your energetic self and given what's going on energetically 
what is it that you want more of? What would make your experience better in this moment? Do you want more energy? Do you want, do you want more flow? Or maybe there was there is a lot of energy, you feel a little overwhelmed. You want more quieter, more calmness. Check what is it that you really want in this moment. And as check, as you acknowledge, as you express what you really want, does something change in this moment? Now let's take our attention to the next step, which is our emotional self. So check emotionally what's going on for you. Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Do you feel excited? Do you feel calm? You could feel happy and sad at the same time. You can also feel excited and calm also at the same time, or you might not be feeling anything at all. Either way, just acknowledge, just be okay with whatever is there. And also check if there is any mental story, mental criticism around your experience and acknowledge it and keep it aside and come back uh, to your own emotional self and see where you are. And given where you are emotionally, what is it that you really want in this moment which would make your experience better? Maybe you want more calmness, maybe you want more connection, maybe you want more flow. So check what is it that you want given what you're feeling in this moment. And see, as you acknowledge what you really want, if something changes for you. Let's go to the next step and I want you to connect yourself to your own higher self, to this place which has all your qualities, all your goodness. And see as you connect to this place and from this place as you connect to the universe, to God, if there is a message for you in this moment, maybe a word or a sentence, a vibration. And if there is, acknowledge it. And if there isn't, that's okay too. And now finally, I invite you to step back, like zoom out as if you are stepping back from, from all of these parts of you, your physical body, your emotional body, your energetic self, all of these, you're stepping back and watching everything, all these parts of you from a distance. Like you're just as an observer, you're watching without trying to change, intervene, trying to fix anything but just simply watching all of these different parts. And see how you feel as you watch everything as you observe it from distance. How does this space feels like? Do you feel more open, more unlimited, more easy, more present? How does this feel like? Just notice that.
So take a deep breath in. Acknowledge whatever your experience was without making it right or wrong. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Come back, feel your body, feel your limbs. Thank you. Anybody would like to share anything about your experience in a word or a sentence? Thank you for this uh, workshop. It brings into awareness not to use it as a crutch also and, uh, you know, have a balanced life. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it was great. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, I, I have recorded it, so if that is recorded properly, I would probably send it to everybody who is online. So thank you for joining in, and uh, we see you soon. Om Shanti. Thank you.